Bill Galinsky just can't seem to decide how he feels about clocks. I hate them all. I hate them all. I think they are all annoying. People ask me all the time, what's my favorite clock? I, I hate every one of them equally. <laughs> they, they all drive me nuts. One way or another, something's going to frustrate you on every clock. On the other hand, I like clocks, but they better run. They better do their job. A clock only does one thing, and if it doesn't do it at all, you've missed. So um, I'm very passionate about clocks running right. That passion is evident everywhere you look in his showroom, workshop, even his front yard. As the owner and operator of DePlainville Clock Company, Bill Galinsky is surrounded by clocks. Some of them he collects, others have been brought in for repairs, but many of them he's made himself. It's probably around 300 clocks that I've made. They all blend together. <laughs> they really do because I'll be working on sometimes five and six clocks at the same time. Making clocks is a skill he's honed over the last 40 plus years, one which grew out of a boyhood curiosity and fascination with machines. My dad collected some clocks, uh, not many, and not real specific kinds of clocks at all. He just had a few that he would pick up here and there, but he always sent them off to the family jeweler and he took care of them. Uh, I was always intrigued when they'd bring them back and he would show the inside all clean and shiny and bright, then it would be running and to watch the gears go, that's what intrigued me. But after seeing how other people made clocks, Bill knew he didn't want to simply copy their designs. So he just came up with his own. At 10 years old, I can remember my dad coming downstairs and I was working later into the evening and he looked at a piece that I was making for one of those clocks. He looked at me, looked at the piece and he says, one day you're gonna make a lot of money at this. And he put it down and let me go back to work. <laughs> so that's, that's when it was that I knew I wanted to keep going. Two years later, he was selling his own line of clocks. I like cuckoo clocks, and even my shop is modeled after a big giant cuckoo clock, but I dare anybody to come up to someone and just say, cuckoo clock, and get a frown. Most of his inspirations come from everyday life. I remember the fishing clock that I have out there in my hunting and fishing series just came from watching my wife in the boat one day. The way she double-handed her fishing rod a couple of times because she had a good-sized bass on, and you never know. You, you just never know. I see a finished clock in my head, and I have to make that clock. I don't know exactly how it's going to work, but I can see the outside case, how it's going to be, how it's going to look, and what it does. Some of the systems that I have to devise for that are pretty complicated, so, but that's, I guess that would be the most fun part of it myself, the, the engineering on the fly. I start out pretty ambitious sometimes and that I wanted to do eight or 10 things and it'll only end up doing five or six or four things, but it's never a disappointment as long as it does more than the last clock that I made does. That's, that's the part that really thrills me. After I got into the structuring of clocks and the cabinetry, uh, was pretty much refined to my own designs. Then the embellishments got into higher amounts of carving uh, to some of the bigger grandfather clocks that you see. Plant scenes, tree scenes, uh, mountain scenes, things like that. That's, that's what I like. It's the larger freestanding clocks that have garnered him the most attention and acclaim, including four awards at the 2014 National Convention. Everything is done as much as possible by hand. Yes, I have machinery to help that, but it's still one piece at a time. And that's why every one of my clocks, even in series, are different. And things of that nature are what make my clocks all unique. Despite the occasional and inevitable frustration, clocks definitely hold a special place in Bill Galinsky's life. I care about them because I made them here and then they, they go off into the world and 
I'll hear from him once in a while when one's hitting the one will hiccup now and then and I have to go take care of it or service it or give it a little advice and coaxing. I love every part of it, but uh, I guess the biggest part of it is making something and bringing it to life the first time. That's, that's very rewarding. They really are my kids.